Hi, Craig. Hi, Hi Craig. Craig. Hello, Craig. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Paddocks. We are the Paddock Girls. Today, we have myself, Chelsea. We have Hannah, Rachel, and we have Leanne and Meg. And today, we're going to be doing an episode on visiting your Grand Prix. Now, we're doing this for a few reasons. We've gotten questions in the past about, you know, how did you get there? Where did you buy your tickets? What did you bring? And also, we were the one asking those questions until just recently. So we thought it would be a great idea to get the information out there and let you guys know how to visit your first Grand Prix. We're going to start off with when to buy your tickets and how you want to find them. Now, when it comes to finding tickets for Grand Prix, there's two things you should do. First, make sure you know when the sales start for the Grand Prix you want to attend. Now, the tickets usually release a year in advance, so you can make sure to do this by subscribing to the mailing list for yours, and I recommend going to the website specifically for the track you want to visit. Yeah, and if you go on there, you can either go to the F1 Experience website as well, and you can add yourself to the mailing list, put deposits on there for hospitality, and et cetera. It's a good place to even find what all of that looks like as well. And if you don't have the chance to buy the tickets on time, you can also buy from accredited source. So think Ticketmaster, Game Time, something like that. There's always someone that's selling tickets on eBay. That can be dodgy. You know, try and find places that are official, like a race circuit website for tickets. Um, or you can also use the verified resellers. The F1 website usually sells tickets, but they are usually the first to sell out. But they are known for a great place to learn more about what is each ticket. Like what is GA, what is grandstand, hospitality packages, etc. I may be crazy, but I also booked at the literal last minute to get tickets and I found so well someone found me on Instagram and I ended up getting tickets through her and it was just great I jumped into an app called a view from my seat which I use for concerts and sporting events and it shows literally people can post photos of the view from their seat anywhere from any location it was my favorite thing to do and sometimes you will get lucky, but just make sure that you are getting a real ticket. Another thing is there are a few ticket choice options like Hannah was saying. So you can go grandstand and you can also go general admission. Now the grandstand ticket will be more costly than a general admission, but you'll have a seat all weekend to watch the race. You can also find some spots that are under shade too, because again, you're going to be in the sun all day. And... On the other hand, general admission, they have some designated areas, but they're first come, first serve. They don't always promise any shade and they can get really crowded. So if you're someone that maybe isn't a fan of being crowded, you like to maybe get your space, a grandstand ticket will give you that. Honestly, though, the general admission, it's a great way to watch a race on a budget, especially if it's your first one and you maybe don't want to knock out that much cash. So there's always going to be TVs around playing the race and the sprints, and you'll still be able to go into a lot of the areas and watch the race from sideline views. And just be mindful of the different type of grandstand tickets you could buy, because some might be bleacher seats and some are actual seats with backs on them. So depending on where you want to be, just be mindful of that. I will say grandstand seats with the backing came in clutch, especially for Megan, who started to fall asleep during FP3, but we can talk about that a little bit later. But I also, like Chelsea said, enjoyed being in a grandstand to be able to observe because I was literally looking at general admission, all the other spots to be like, what would I get next time? And just observe everything from a higher vantage point. Yeah. And if you get a GA ticket, just be prepared for quite a lot of walking and also check to see if the track you're going to allows you to bring your own chair like a camping chair um, i know coda allows this but if the race you're going to doesn't definitely also see about bringing a picnic blanket to sit on i've done both chairs and blankets and both are really great for sitting in the field for ga if you haven't decided what grand prix to attend just think about location and cost. If you find yourself in North America, you have four options for in-continent races. 
you can go to Coda in Texas, you can go to Vegas, you can go to Canada, and you can go to Miami. Now, to be honest, these races, they're not necessarily cheap, at least the ones in the United States. But if you're able to find location, flights, and tickets ahead of time, and maybe form a group, you'll have a way better chance of making it affordable, and at the end of the day, you'll have a better time anyways. There's also always the option to leave the States and attend an international Grand Prix. Now, there's a huge variety of options for races um, in the sense that they are in completely different countries, completely different cities. You have street races, you have some that host campgrounds, you have some in historic towns, you have some in these beautiful vacation spots where you might decide to spend a few extra days. So, for example, you have Mexico, Brazil, Monaco, Spain, Abu Dhabi, and about 20 more options to go from. Yeah, and like Chelsea was saying, I've definitely been one that looks into the international races. And I've literally looked into Silverstone, and what I've noticed is a lot of people will book a Silverstone trip the second the dates and everything gets announced. Because you can even, if you get there early enough... Book the hotel that literally overlooks the track, which I think watching a race from your bed out your window sounds like a wonderful, relaxing moment to have. Another thing that I've noticed people do if you can't go during race season, I've seen people post walking out on their balcony at the Silverstone track and just seeing George Russell beating past them below just at a practice run. The dream would be to plan a trip to Monaco, though. Because who wouldn't want to watch the race in Monaco? The true dream would be from a yacht. But let's be honest, not a lot of us uh, probably could make it onto a yacht. But we're just going to manifest it, actually. If you don't have the yacht, there is a hotel, too, uh, throughout the track. Because it is one of the street tracks. So, again, we're just going to manifest that. Something that I like to do when I plan the GPs, because I've planned many, but I've only done one is all look up people's vlogs and just to get the real view as a fan to see how other people have kind of done the trip themselves. Like I watched a Monza one and I was like, that's a lot of walking. And then I went to Miami and realized, no, no, they're all a lot of walking. Uh, But another thing, as Meg shakes her head, yes, as she just recovered. (laughs) Another thing that I really liked to do is like see the little extras like someone in Montreal they post a one where on Thursdays they all can take a ride on the track which I thought was really cool yeah and I definitely agree looking at what people are doing on social media because each race kind of has its own system going whether it's their like transportation system the stay situation preferred airport you know some of these places they do have campgrounds nearby that you can stay at like austria britain and france but that option right there it will save you a lot in cost if you want to try an international race of course you can also do airbnb and hotels but they can get a bit more costly especially because they know you're going for the formula grand prix so we really just recommend booking out in advance to avoid those last minute surcharges Going on social media, you can see where other people stayed and maybe use that as a recommendation too. I will say, again, I booked so last minute, literally three days before we had to leave. And my little tidbit, check to see your hotel points because I was able to get us like a whole night free basically. And then also, I normally like to do an Airbnb just to feel more relaxed and at home, but getting that free airport shuttle really was incredible. Yeah, I mean, if you check out the Formula One Grand Prix blog, like the official website, they will post an article for the best airports that you can find near the track that offer those buses to the hotels. Traffic itself, it's really messy. They do a lot of road closures, especially for city circuits. So you have to look into getting dropped off as close as possible. And you have to make sure you have a parking pass ready for the weekend before the race begins if you want to park on campus. I do want to say, if you are doing rideshare, try and do the group thing, try and save some money. They do surcharge as well on the apps when you're trying to use Uber and Lyft and things like that. Yeah, and what Chelsea and Megan and I learned is that they will cancel on you even when they say they're two minutes away. We probably had about three or four cancel on us. And we did a little loophole where 
after the first morning, I started eyeing up closer locations to the uh, to the track. Um, but the closer we could get, which was great, because the original walk was like a mile and a half for us, and we were not about to do that twice a day after walking the amount of steps that we did during the GP. So that's another little fun little recommendation that I really, really want to push. And some tracks will also have park and ride areas. They're usually a little bit further, but there's always a running shuttle that will take you to and from the track. And they're usually, those passes cost a little bit less and they're a really good way to avoid the heavy traffic near the track and getting Ubers or Lyfts canceled on you. Yeah, and just some things to know about going to the race. So like Rachel, Leanne, and Chelsea had mentioned, depending on your Grand Prix and the location slash your seats, I look to either get there early so you can scope out where to sit, where everything is, prepare to either Uber slash ride share, pay for parking. But due to the hustle and bustle, if you do pay for parking, I get there early as especially on race day, it tends to get packed and filled pretty early. So you kind of want to make sure you know where you're at and it will save on walking that day. Also, depending on the track and all the locations, ride shares and Ubers can be a far walk from the actual track. So always just be mindful to prepare to walk some ways that day. If you are a general admission ticket, please ensure you find a good spot on race day and secure it soon because it's first come first serve basis. And depending on if the race is sold out and whatnot, it tends to get limited on good seating quick. And as also mentioned, be prepared to bring something to rest on because I don't know about y'all, but I don't really want to sit on grass or stand the whole time the race is going on because that can get tiresome. Ensure you pack the essentials you need and look at track regulations because each track is going to vary on what type of regulations you're allowed to do, bring, and whatnot. If I have grandstand tickets, I typically only bring a fanny pack because you don't necessarily need to bring a chair, a blanket, whatnot, versus if you are GA, I would look to see if you could bring a chair or a blanket. Um, Be mindful of the weather. Bring sunscreen, wear a hat, sunglasses. This is going to help block the sun and or the potential rain. Um, Maybe one of those folded cheap little ponchos you can get that you can stick in your back pocket or in your backpack. But this may not always be applicable for night races. And then just something to note, um, if you are wearing shorts or skirts and it is a hot sunny day, you may want that anti-chafing stuff for your legs. Because the last thing you want is to get a rash. Also, if your track allows a water bottle, I know Kodo has in the past, bring it and know some have refillable stations to fill up with water. But also check the regulations because some may make you have it empty prior to showing up and then you can fill it up when you get in there. And then last but not least, bring your charger or a charging block. Some places might have charging stations. You never know. I will say Miami had not just a station, but they you could rent char- like portable chargers. And hopefully every single race does it because it really helped out. And you just keep it for the whole day. And the only thing is if you don't return it, they charge you 40 bucks. Going back to what Ham was talking about with the weather, I highly recommend looking up and keeping an eye on the weather as the race gets closer. Like with Coda and Texas, the weather is super unpredictable in Texas. It says it'll rain and then it won't um, or it says it'll be 90 degrees and then it'll drop to 50 and it can just be really unpredictable or if you go to las vegas it's really hot during the day and then gets really cold at night so you'll want to bring a sweater even though it feels really silly to bring one by the time the sun goes down you'll be very happy that you brought something to throw on now I think it'll be a little fun time for myself, Meg, and Chelsea can talk about our experience in Miami. Meg, do you want to start us off? I can, yeah. So Miami was a grand old time. I think we all had a lot of fun uh, over the course of the three days there. I ended up coming home with some merch 
more probably than I wanted to and spending more than I wanted to, but it's fine. It's all it's all worth it in the end. It's for F1 and it's for Lando. So it's fine. Everything's fine. But I also ended up coming home with some blood blisters on my feet, which were a pretty, pretty nice souvenir as well. Um, just recovering now from it. But back to the race. The race was a very fun and cool experience, especially going for the very first time since it was my first Grand Prix. It was also awesome getting to experience it with Leanne and Chelsea there too, um, because it was also their first Grand Prix. So it was just, it was just a really cool experience overall. Honestly, I had an amazing time. I will say it was way dirtier than I expected in the sense that I would come home and my white top was almost black with like tire and street gravel, especially because me, Leanne, and Meg were all near Charles during his two accidents. So we got the end of that. And that was not the best. It was kind of cool to see. I was really sad to see Charles hit the wall. It was also kind of cool to see because I can say I saw it happen. I even have a video chasing Charles on his little scooter of shame. And it is posted on our socials if you guys want to see because it's hilarious. No offense, Charles. I'm really sorry. But... It was so cool. We also got to go to the paddock area, which Miami just did new. For some people that don't know, they basically put all of the tents inside the arena. And fans from the 300 section could look down. And it's a little awkward to say, but basically it was like a zoo where you're looking down at the gorilla exhibit and you're seeing the animals hang out. Yeah, we were seeing the drivers and all the people with paddock passes hang out down there. We saw someone do dances on the dolphin it was pretty funny you guys don't know this but leanne and meg are dying right now because it was just people were having a great time and we were just observing at that point like with our binocular cameras he was wittily gwittying on the dolphin and it was amazing and we saw carlos play with a tennis ball we saw alex also do an interview we saw a few people doing interviews so that was kind of cool it was definitely an experience we saw Toto on his lovely scooter. We got to witness the scooter in person. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was kind of like, I wish all of them had that experience. So like you didn't have to drop 20K to experience the paddock because it really was like it made the fans feel included. Like the amount of people in between races that were just standing there and yelling and getting them to like wave and just the cutest freaking moments, just grown men chasing 20 year olds it was great it was so fun <laughs> and we did end up meeting some really cool people that worked for the companies we met some people from mercedes williams aston martin who were cool um mclaren was probably my favorite because she was a moving girl but meg kind of got to speak to them a little better because we sent her out there yeah, so I actually made bracelets for most of the drivers and even some of the reserve drivers for some of the teams, like Mick and Danny. I didn't get to deliver all of the bracelets or give out all the bracelets, though, just because we didn't see anyone from Red Bull or Ferrari or Alpine. But we did manage to get them to a couple of teams, like Chelsea said, like McLaren, Williams, Aston in mercedes and they were all super nice we were convinced for a hot sec that the mercedes guy was going to call us into the paddock to hand deliver the bracelets though because he just kept watching us walk away and he, he watched us so... too long <laughs> yeah, and, and he, he was the kindest one he oh like God, pulled his so phone nice. out the second she handed him off i was like i think we should wait <laughs> and i was hobbling i was like i just want to leave i want to go back <laughs> like, yeah, like i, I Meg was sitting on the chair yeah, Chelsea and Leanne and this other very nice girl that was just standing there waiting. I don't even remember what her name was. I don't even know. I don't but think we got her name. I don't think we any of us exchanged names. <laughs> no, we were just fangirling. Okay. They were waiting and they had all the bracelets in their hands organized by team. And I would sit on a little rock because my feet were killing me. And they'd be like, Meg, someone's coming. Someone's coming. And they'd tell me the name of the team. And then I'd be like, oh, God, here we go again. And the McLaren lady, I really loved her because she made time for me because she's like, walk and talk, walk and talk. Let's go. We got to go. We got to go. Because she was clearly on a mission somewhere to hand something out to someone. 
I will say we learned a valuable lesson. You need really good shoes for these Grand Prix. I tried three different shoes every day. The ones that killed me the least were my Nike Air Maxes. The Vans were horrible. Oh, yeah, they suck. Oh, actually, no. I wore my No Bull shoes, and those were really good on Friday, too. This is not an ad. Those are just good shoes. I think my Adidas were the only ones that I wore after the first day because the first day shoes were not it. And then the rest, I just wore my Adidas. I was going to say, when I went to Kona last year, I wore my just super, super beat up Adidas that are broken in. And they were perfect because I've worn them so many times that that was just like the perfect shoe. That or like my super broken in Converse. You want a shoe that is... You don't mind if it gets dirty, and it's broken in. They will get dirty with the amount of walking you're going to do. And I personally have done Adidas and Nike in the past with good um, cushion in them. I met a little boy. He, we befriended him as we were leaving. He was walking around all day in Crocs. But then he was like, I didn't have anything else. No other choice. My dad has made me leave. And he was my best friend on that walk. I loved him. We also made best friends with the two guys sitting in front of us. We never, we never got their names either. But if they're out there somewhere, <laughs> shout out to you <laughs> because you were great. <laughs> they were fun. They weren't like condescending or anything like that. They just had fun. Yeah, and they they said if Lando was coming over, that they would uh, they would make sure I got to see him. So shout out to them because we were in the McLaren grandstand, and there was a whole bunch of confusion. About about if Lando and Oscar were going to come over or not and speak to us. And they, they promised. They were like, don't, don't you worry. We'll make sure you get to see them. Because they also knew I made bracelets. So they, they shout out to the homies. I think that confusion was because last year on the first one, they did come over and do a Q&A with fans in the grandstands. I think a lot of the teams did. So I think everyone either... They initially were going to do that, but then stuff cut in time, like the introductions, I think, took up more time than they planned for them to do. So they had to cut some stuff. And I think that was what got cut. Well, I would also say to like get ready to spend money on food because it's not cheap. Yeah. And I mean this in the sense that I think I got a pizza for like, and it was a mini pizza, you know, personal one for like 20 something, $22. And the beer was like eight. So I guess that really wasn't bad. I didn't even try getting an actual drink with actual like vodka or anything in it. But I do know that those were going high priced. Of course, I am talking about Miami. Miami in general is already high priced. But from my understanding, that's going to be the same for the rest of the United States Grand Prix. So just a forewarning. A lot of these places also don't really allow food in with you. At least Miami, they didn't. Um, I know some people were able to sneak it in the first two days, but on Sunday, they were way more strict than they were actually trying to kind of look at bags that day, um, which they did not do the two days prior. But yeah, if you're going to go to these events, just prepare to spend money on food. I mean, you're going to spend money on merch too. To be honest, the hats start at $100. I think there's maybe a couple that were like $80, but they were specifically not the driver hats. What we learned is that Chelsea and I are not allowed to shop together because we were only supposed to go in and buy shirts. And then both of us were like, well, if you buy the hat, I'll buy the hat. And then all of a sudden we have freaking Ferrari shirts and hats walking around when we weren't even going to buy any. And I also got the Aston Martin bucket hat. Yes, you did. I, the first day, bought a Mercedes bucket hat with the intent of giving it to my mom for Mother's Day, which I did. And she, for a split second, forgot that she had already seen me wearing it. Yeah, I bought the McLaren bucket hat. And it's honestly my favorite thing. I'm wearing it right now. And I wore it for like the whole entire weekend. And I'm also getting its use because it was $90. So it, it, it's, <laughs> it's worth it, though. Took you a while to find it. Oh, yeah. It took me, what, how many different F- F1 stores did we go to? Like three or three four, four or five? I don't know. And and also, I was shocked because the actual McLaren like the store didn't have it. They were like, go to an F1 store. I was like, why wouldn't, why, why? You guys should have it. You are McLaren. But whatever. I got it. 
It's fine. We're good. <laughs> yeah, while you were oh. buying that, Chelsea and I were ending up getting all the tops trading cards. Which, by the way, keep an eye out for because apparently they're going to do that at other Grand Prix and you can collect the drivers and the team principals. And if any of you guys get a Carlos, please DM us. Please. Yes, please. Also, keep, keep hold on to those cards because I was watching a show on Netflix. It's like the King of Collectibles or something. And this kid from Canada had a Lewis Hamilton card. And he got like, I don't know, two hundred thousand dollars for it, three hundred thousand dollars for it. It was like some special Lewis Hamilton card. I don't no, know. No, he got a million. Oh, a million okay, a million. Just kidding. Even more. But yeah, so hold on to those cards. I think it was like a very special edition. It like was. you're not gonna always oh. pull it out of the pack. But just keep an eye out if you get those cards because you could make money off of it. Rachel, we're doing that in Coda. We're doing that in Coda. Absolutely. And Chelsea, if we find a Carlos, I will let you know. Please, I'll cry. Yeah, because I think <laughs> he wasn't an option. Him and Lewis weren't options. They only released 10 for ours. There was only 10 options that we could get. Interesting. Yeah, I wonder if they'll do different versions for each race. They might, yeah. Uh, another thing that I just remembered from the Grand Prix, I don't know if it just depends on the area, but the pe- watch out for the pedicabs because they out in Miami were trying to charge. Correct me if I get the part of it wrong. Sixty dollars per person, either per minute or per mile. I don't remember which one it was. Regardless, ridiculous. It was per mile. Okay. Regardless, <laughs> for sure, like, but everybody was like, "Oh, mine's different." It's like you're still scamming everybody, and. As much as I wanted to give them money to help at least Megan up the road. <laughs> because that final day, I felt so bad. But Chelsea and I were like, we know you can't walk, but you have to. We can't get picked up here. You just have to. And she just looked like a sad puppy that just got like smacked with a piece of paper. And we we're like, you got to do it. We have to go. I wanted to steal a bike so bad just for Meg. Yeah, it's not that it was, like, a tiring walk. I mean, it was tiring, but, like, it was just my feet to, like, preface that. Like, so if you go to a Grand Prix, you're like, oh, my God, it's so much walking, and you're going to be so tired and out of shape. It's not that. It's I wore the wrong shoes, so then my feet got messed up, so then that created the issue. It wasn't at all, like, an out-of-shape thing. I know this is kind of like a left field, but have y'all ever seen those TikToks where it's those people training to go to like Disney World or go to like a TikTok, the dads with their kids and whatnot? It just automatically made me think of this where it's like people are like, you're out of shape. No, no, not at all. You just don't understand the intenseness that goes on. It is intense. I remember walking last year around Coda and Coda is not flat. There's a lot of hills. And it's just like, it's a lot of walking. Even uh, when my friend and I went to the MotoGP, I mean, we were doing 10,000 steps a day easily. It was a lot of walking. I will say, try and find the map when you walk in and just decide where you're going to go. There's really no point to walk the whole track. We learned our lesson. It's basically... Everything's replicated into different grandstand areas. So you have basically the same food, the same drinks, the same bars. They're just maybe marginally different. You can also go to other sections to find the pop-up. I know that Red Bull had a pop-up in one area and Mercedes only had a pop-up in one area. But don't force yourself to walk the whole track. It's not worth it. Find the map. Find the area that you're like based in and just chill there because you will hire yourself out otherwise for no reason you know every morning i did a meg how's your feet check we wake up and be like how you doing over there are you sure you can walk chelsea and i wanted to get her a wheelchair but she wouldn't do it no i i I didn't want to feel like i don't know it's a pride thing i didn't i didn't want to be in wheelchair i don't know but i i i I, I knew I could do it. It'd be painful, but I wanted to walk. <laughs> I did convince her to use the elevators for the bridge. I did, did. I won on that. I won that way. Yeah. Because the bridges were hard. Like, 
those were the hardest part, I think, of walking around the track. Like when my feet were still normal too. It's just a lot. Yeah. I also, I would recommend, because um, I know at Coda they have kind of like a, um, almost like a festival type section where they have like little rides and the Ferris wheel and all this stuff. Yeah. And they, it's really cool. But if you want to do something like that to help keep you from having to walk a lot, do that on like Friday during free practice. And then that way you can go and just camp out and watch qualifying and the race on Saturday and Sunday. Cause there are people who will get to Coda at like four o'clock in the morning to camp out and wait for the gates to open so they can get a good spot for GA. It's insane. No, thank you. <laughs> That's and like people with early. the Taylor Swift merch this weekend in the Philly. Oh my God. Yeah, I will say that it is kind of cool though when you're on that Ferris wheel at Coda when the cars are going around the track because you get like a bird's side view of the whole track plus get to see all of it. Especially at night sometimes. I mean, while they're different experiences, it's super cool. And um, other tracks are known to have Ferris wheels. Bahrain has one. And I think Abu Dhabi has one, etc. So some have like festival vibes and some are really like party vibe. It kind of depends on the type of race you go to. Are you going to say the same thing I'm about to say? I was extremely disappointed in Miami because the only way you would have access to a bird's eye view is if you paid thousands of dollars to have a Heineken Club card and be able to use the little gondola kind of like, yeah. it's like a ski thing, you know? That is the only way you would be able to use it if you had paid thousands to get this dumb little Heineken pass. And I was like, that makes no sense. We already no. paid hundreds to find a chair here. And we just wanted to use it so Meg could go from the hard rock to the beach. <laughs> or no, hard rock to a marina. That's all we wanted oh it for. Leanne, Leanne at first thought the guy said it was for handicap only. <laughs> but I, it was, I was like, like perfect. No. <laughs> no, I was like, no, the guy said Heineken only. <laughs> and we were both like, I was so oh. mad. <laughs> you said thousands, right? I can't comprehend that. That's ridiculous. I'm pretty sure the Ferris wheel most time is like maybe twenty or thirty dollars. There's also the observation deck at Coda, which is really mm -hmm. cool. I don't know how that works during Formula One, but I know most of the time it's like twenty or thirty bucks to go up the observation deck and you can see everything. It's like fifty dollars during F one. Oh, that's it's not pretty... bad. No, it's not bad at all. Yeah. From what I was able to find, basically any form of club or VIP pass for Miami, it was a thousand starting. Yeah. So I maybe would not recommend Miami or Vegas for your first race if you're trying to do something that's more budget friendly. Maybe Coda or Canada would be better. I definitely think Coda is a great first race for people just because... The track isn't a street track. It's built specifically for Formula One. So it makes it a lot easier to navigate almost. And then as far as Vegas goes, I would definitely try to wait till it's like a couple years in because I feel like Vegas is going to be kind of a nightmare until they've gone through it a couple of times. I was just in Vegas for a conference and they're working on repaving the strip right now. And it is already a disaster just with the construction that they're doing it's it's definitely going to be pretty rough the first couple of races they have there yeah i mean the hotel room let alone right now that i've been looking up they're all like going for practically 3k and that's just ridiculous who wants to stay in a vegas hotel room for that price <laughs> for three days i will say some girls that we know that are also formula fans they've looked into international trips they can do international races like in europe for the same price that they would do just buying a ticket to the las vegas grand prix so if you are in the united states listening don't just go to the united states race and think it's cheaper because it's here go to it obviously if you want to and you can i mean i went to the miami one so did these girls but if we had probably planned more ahead of time, we would have looked into Europe because 
cost wise, you get a more bang for your buck. And we really want to do the camping. Oh, yeah, the Silverstone camping. <laughs> I think, especially if you're coming from the East Coast, that is significantly easier to get a flight out of to Europe than trying to go to Las Vegas from New York. The only reason I like to go to Coda is because I literally live in Austin. I live in the area. It's easier. But I would love to go to a Grand Prix in Europe. My sister and I are looking at it next year, but who knows? I will say that for the cost of me going to Coda this year with the Airbnb and everything, I could spend the money and probably go to like Silverstone or another Grand Prix for probably similar in price, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, I had looked into Monza earlier this year um, because it would have aligned with a like after I finished a work trip. So it would have lined up and I would have literally flown from London to Milan, Italy for $62. And then all I would have to do is get a a hotel nearby and my tickets and it was all going to be less than probably a flight from the U.S. to Milan. That's insane. If I would have started over there. Yeah. That's crazy. Another random thing. Don't think you have to buy a ticket for all three days. There are options to buy for just Friday, just Saturday, and just race day. Because if you're going to your first race, maybe maybe you don't want to commit that full price for all three days. Or even just commit to attending this all three days because it is loud, it is crowded. And you can test out the waters by doing one race day. I think it's still fun. I still think it's worth it, especially if you're just a fan of the sport and you want to get a vibe of how it is and maybe decide if the next year you want to do all three. It's a cool way to check it out. And I will say, don't just leave right after the race is done. Explore. Walk around. We ended up walking places that we wouldn't have gotten into during the race. Like end of race day, you can just walk down escalators they stop caring and all of a sudden you can end up in the paddock club and leave and get a free poster so definitely recommend just exploring but be polite don't go crazy don't act i don't know the right word but don't just be polite when you do it just casually walk around don't like run up and be aggressive towards anybody and just enjoy explore have fun yeah respect people's boundaries yes please All right, I think that about wraps it up. But Meg, did you want to say the moment of the weekend? Sure thing. Yeah, so the moment of the weekend definitely had to be seeing Alex wearing the bracelet I made him. Because I had literally just finished telling my mom after we were sitting down eating lunch. I was like, Mom, I don't think any of these guys are going to wear the bracelets I made. Like, I really hope they do. But if they don't, it's okay. And then I literally opened up Instagram. I saw a post from Alex and I scrolled through and I was like, oh my God, that's literally my bracelet on his wrist. Like the blue and the white and the Albano. And I was like, oh my God, mom, 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 look, look, look. And then to see Lily post it too. Definitely, if not moment of the week, moment of so far the year for me personally, that was a big accomplishment. And also shout out to the Williams employee for actually giving Alex the bracelet and Logan his bracelet because that man I owe I owe that man my life for uh giving him the bracelet thank you all so much for joining us in the paddock today we really had a great time reminiscing on the Miami weekend and probably gonna get off this and plan our next trip so we'll see you at the next race bye bye Craig bye Craig bye Craig bye Craig bye Craig Craig.